The topic of this video is analyzing the graph of a rational function. This is a continuation of the previous video. Okay, we've performed steps 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're ready to move on now to step 5, looking for the horizontal or oblique asymptote. So when we uh, perform step 5, we take note of the fact that we are using our reduced r to find the horizontal or oblique asymptote if one exists. Okay, so the numerator degree is 1. The denominator degree is also 1, which means they have the same degree. Therefore, we are going to have a horizontal asymptote. And its equation will be y equals b, where b is the ratio of the highest degree term coefficients. Well, the highest degree term from the numerator is this x, and it has a coefficient of 1. The highest degree term from the denominator is this x, which also has a coefficient of 1. So b in this problem is that ratio, 1 divided by 1, which is simply 1. So we get our horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. Horizontal asymptote y equals 1. Okay, the next thing we're going to check for is, does this horizontal asymptote intersect our graph? All right, so let's find out. We're going to use reduced r of x in order to make that determination. So our reduced r of x is y equals x plus 8 over x plus 6. The horizontal asymptote we found was y equals 1. Set these equal to each other. x plus 8 over x plus 6 equals 1. Now 1 can be written as 1 over 1, and then we can set the cross multiples equal to each other. So the x plus 6 will be multiplied by the numerator 1, the x plus 8 will be multiplied by the denominator 1, and those two products will be equal to each other. So we get x plus 8 times 1 equals x plus 6 times 1. Anything times 1 is itself, so we get x plus 8 equals x plus 6. And subtracting on x on both sides, we get x, excuse me, subtracting x on both sides, we get 8 equals 6, which is false. The fact that this equation has no solution means that there is no place on our graph where our rational function intersects our horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to write no intersection. All right, and that finally brings us to step six. Now, before we perform step six, let's take a look at the information that we've gathered so far and see what our graph looks like. Sometimes step six is not necessary if we get enough information from steps one through five. So now seems like a good time to check for that. Let's draw a y-axis and an x-axis and begin plotting the things we know. We need to set the scale of our graph so that it accommodates all of the points we found, 7, 15 thirteenths, negative 8, 0, and 0, 4 thirds. So let's go ahead and make sure that our x value goes all the way out to negative 8. We'll make this a negative 8 right here. In fact, let's make it a little sooner than that. So negative 8, which means this would be negative 4, which means this would be positive 4, and this would be positive 8. And this would be positive 12. There's even room for a 16 over here. Using the same scale for y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1, 2, 3, negative 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 8. Okay, we know we have a hole at location 7, 15 thirteenths. And 15 thirteenths is just a little bit higher than 1. And since we've got a horizontal asymptote at 1, let's go ahead and draw that horizontal asymptote first, and then we can make sure that our hole is a little bit above it. So y equals 1 is our horizontal asymptote. Let's draw that in. Remember, a horizontal asymptote should be drawn using a dashed line type. I 
have to shift my ruler here. All right, there is our horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. Uh, while we're at it, I might as well go ahead and draw the vertical asymptote, x equals negative 6. All right, our x-intercept is negative 8, 0. So that would be this point right here. Our y-intercept is 0, 4 thirds. 4 thirds is the decimal 1.3 repeating, so just a little bit higher than 1 over here. Our hole is at 7, 15 thirteenths. Again, 15 thirteenths is just a little bit bigger than 1, so here's the location of our hole. And our domain is x is not allowed to be 7 or negative 6. Notice that at 7 we have a hole, and at negative 6 we have a vertical asymptote, so that is consistent with what we observed here. Okay, now we just have to find a way to connect all of these points together to see if we can create our graph. We know that there is no intersection of our graph with the horizontal asymptote shown here. So what that means is, if we can just figure out how the points that we have so far approach the vertical asymptote, we'll have an idea of what this graph looks like. For example, this point right here has to approach both this horizontal asymptote and this vertical asymptote. And since it cannot cross either one of those, we find that the shape of our graph must look like this. We learn that our vertical asymptote is either approached uh, above on the left and below on the right, or the reverse of that, down on the left, up on the right. Well, we've just seen that it goes down on the left, therefore it must go up on the right. So this point must move in this direction so that it approaches our vertical asymptote. It also has to go through that point and through this hole and approach this horizontal asymptote. Notice that with just the information we obtained in steps 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we've been able to create the complete graph of our function. 